Hello and welcome back to the Coders Legacy channel. In this video, we'll explore how to create a toolbar in TakeInter. So what exactly is a toolbar? Well, take a look down here, this blue little strip at the bottom of my screen. Uh, this is Visual Studio Code, so it has a toolbar over here. And this contains a bunch of useful things. For example, I can select the language, and then I can change uh, my bytes inversion, and there are a bunch of other things in here. Um, this is, it's a bunch of buttons that I can change settings and stuff in Visual Studio Code. And uh, just, you know, there's some information in here as well. It's telling me what line number I'm on, what the indentation is. I can change the indentation, etc. Basically, it's a bunch of tools that are helpful to you while using the application. Okay, that's what a toolbar is. So in today's video, we're going to be creating a notepad type of application using the text widget. And we're going to create a toolbar which contains a bunch of relevant tools like copy, paste, cut, uh, new file. We're going, to we're going to make icons on that toolbar for these actions. And then end result is actually going to look pretty cool. So stick around. Now let's go ahead and begin. Um, this is actually going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, we just need to, uh, let me explain what we have here currently, okay? We have a text widget, and then we have two frames. This toolbar frame is going to be at the very top. I've done tk.top, and it's going to be at the top. Also, we didn't need to do this because if you just pack them in, the, you know, there's like vertical. The one that gets packed first goes at the top, and the one that goes next goes at the bottom, right? It's vertical, vertical stacking, so we don't need to actually put that in. Anyways, um, we have these two frames. The main, the text widget goes into the main frame, and the buttons that we're gonna create for our toolbar will go into the toolbar frame. Okay, so let's get started. Now we're gonna do, um, we're, we're gonna use icons as well. So I have these icons right here. A new file, cut. It's a bunch of scissors, and paste a standard icon. Let me just zoom in a bit. So you see, this, that's what the copy is like. Cut, and new and paste standard icons so let's begin now this is going to be a bit lengthy so i'm just going to skip over some of the boring parts but let me just show you in detail how the first one is done okay so we're using a uh, pillow to load the icons in now take Inter does have its own photo image module but the problem with take Inter with its module is that it does not support that many types i think it doesn't support pngs or it supports a very limited type of pngs um, it's, it's, I stopped using that a long time ago because it's just uh, too many problems with it. Um, and yeah, it's just not very good. So instead, what you can do is use Pillow. Uh, it's installed a bit differently. It's not installed as PIL. It's installed like this. So Pillow, right, right Pillow. So then you can import it, this. And this image, this, this one is the standard image class for Pillow. And this one is a special class that works with TakeInter. It's compatible with TakeInter. So that's pretty, pretty handy. So just first load it up, load it up as a regular Pillow image. Then we're, what we're going to do is convert it. Let's just call it TK image. And we'll convert it to image TK dot photo image. And then we'll pass this image in here, okay? And since we don't need to actually define this one using self, or actually we do need to. Oh uh, yeah, that's actually an important thing. Make sure you define these images using self. The images will not display if you if you remove this. The reason being is that if the function ends, if this init function ends, uh, then if this was created without self then it's going to go out of scope and get destroyed. But if you define it using self, it's going to persist and you know persist beyond the, the call of this function and basically become stored within the class, kind of. So it's important to use self, right? Now, um, what we're going to do is self.copy button, sorry, new button. We're going to define buttons, okay? Because we want to display these as icons and we're going to use TTK here, okay? We're using TTK because they look a bit nicer than the standard take inter ones. Okay, not a big deal. If, feel free to use whatever whatever you like. The code will not change. Okay, so I'm going to select the image. Okay, this is how you put the image in. We're not going to define any text, okay? And we'll leave the command parameter blank for now. We'll define the functionality too. 
we're not just going to make the UI in this video. We'll go ahead and, you know, do the whole do the whole thing. Okay, so I'm just, I'm just showing you how the first one's going to be done. Then I'll skip ahead in the video to where we do all of, all of them, the UI. Then we'll do the functionality together. Okay, so this is the first one. I'm going to run this. And look at that new image. Okay, sorry. I need to pass in the take enter image. Okay, done. Now here we go. Here's our text widget, and there's our new file button. It looks pretty nice, I I think. So that's our toolbar, um, right here. And then yeah, you can change the color, by the way, if you wanted to on, on the frame. Um, but I think the standard color is nice. So that's our first one. Now I'll just skip ahead in the video to. I just need to like duplicate this and then do this for the others. Paste. All right. That wasn't that didn't take too long. Okay. So if I run this now, whoops. We packed them all into the same place. So just make sure you increase the column. All right. And now we have all of them. Okay. Cool. So that didn't take too long. Now we have uh, these four and the UI for them has been created. So now what we're going to do is define the functionality, even though for all intents and purposes, the video can just end right here because, you know, we defined uh, the toolbar. That's a toolbar. So let's go ahead and just, you know, complete the functionality. It's not going to take too long and it'll be a useful experience. So if we define a new file, like because the new file button, that's what it does. So what we're going to do is the text widget, then um, now, this, the implementation will depend on you, obviously, but what, I'm, what I, what I, what I want to do is just delete the current text, okay? And that's a new file. That, that, that's it. Okay, so then we'll do copy text, and then we'll do selected text. We need to get the selected text, right? Now, this is interesting. So, um, I'm using a try-catch statement here, and I'll explain why I'm using that in a minute. So we're going to do the text widget dot get cell. Now cell is a special uh, tag, I guess you, you could call it. I think that's what take enter calls it, a tag. So what this does is that it's going to get the selected, okay, the first letter that's selected all the way to the last letter that is selected. Okay, and the reason I'm putting this in a try statement is because if nothing is selected, this is will actually raise an error. Okay, and I don't yet know. Uh, yeah, long story. So just do self dot root because root the parent is stored in there. Self dot root. So what I'm going to do is self dot root, and this is the interesting part. That there's a function called clipboard clear, and this will clear our clipboard because we want to update the clipboard with what we just acquired clipboard append selected text okay and now it's appeared within our clipboard so if we do control v it's actually going to appear and we're going to define the paste method now uh, that actually does just that we're not going to use control c or control v okay at all we're going to do it through the buttons so yeah it's just user friendly i guess that way and we just do clipboard get and we get what we just selected and assuming something was selected, we'll use text widget dot insert. Insert. If you do, if you do this, insert. Uh, this basically will insert whatever text we pass into the second parameter, which is the pasted text. Which okay. So it's gonna insert this text wherever the insert cursor is. Okay. Now just 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 one left. So we'll do that that one quickly. Cut text self. And again, I'm I'm gonna use try because the we need to we, we need to do this again. Okay, we need to get the selected text. This is very similar to, to copy actually. So you know this is actually really similar to copy with just one difference. And we'll just copy that. Okay. And but the difference is that we're also deleting it. Um so text widget dot delete where we we copied it and then we're gonna delete it. We're gonna delete the selected text. So selected first to selected last. Delete everything that's selected, basically. And we'll just complete this, and now we're done. So we just got to connect these, and we will be good to go. So command is equal to self.new, 
new file then I'm gonna connect this button so command is equal to self dot cut text and command is equal to self dot copy text then command is equal to self dot paste text and now we're done now to see how well things worked out so you, you know what I'm just gonna copy over the text from here into our toolbar okay now let's see what we can do let me just increase the size a little bit all right there everything fits on one line now so let's say I, I want to duplicate this okay I'm gonna copy it okay copy then I'm just gonna put a line over there and then click paste see let's try a cut let me let me do a cut okay it's gone and I'll go to the bottom and I can paste it here see now I can do new file and everything's gone so this is basically how you create a toolbar how to implement functionality I hope you guys found this video interesting and useful let me know if there's something else you want to see uh, do subscribe to the channel, alright? Follow for future videos. See you guys in the next video.